character Bog was going to become such a big character when you first read the script? No. No, I was hired to play a, um, such a one scene, the opening scene, where uh, Bug uh, shows up in the van and has the an hacking equipment mm. for no in Nita. That was, I was supposed to do just that one scene. I was very pleasantly surprised when I learned that they had written a second scene for me um, after and uh, that I was going to go fly to Chicago and shoot it. And oh. then I still didn't know that I would do more. And um, I was in an elevator uh, uh, on my way back to San Francisco from Chicago and the director of photography, the two-time Academy Award winner John Toll, he said, you'll be back. <laughs> and I, I was jumping out of my skin. That's so cool. Um, the second question is, Bud has such a quirky personality with his own way of speaking and moving. How did you come up with these much-loved tra traits for Bug? Uh, well, that's collaboration, I would say, between um, uh, Lana, Lana Wachowski and uh, also Lily Wachowski and the other um, writers and creators and, and myself. Um, and I, um, the longer we shot, Lana with everybody tended to learn what the actors were like. And all of the characters tended to become a little bit more like the actors, and uh, so it was both the wonderful generosity of uh, Lana's enormous, multicolored rainbow-looking heart, and uh, all the other people around. You know, so it was just uh, a, a beautiful thing, and I was so thrilled that she seemed to like what I was doing, and she seemed to like me. And I loved her from the very first moment I met her. So oh. it was certainly mutual. Oh, that's so cool. Um, third question. Uh, what's it like to visit so many countries to shoot the show and to meet fans from around the world? Well, that was extraordinary. Um, let me first make sure that you understand uh, that I did not travel out of the United States until the final episode. Um, mm -hmm. I shot, season one and season two are shot entirely in San Francisco and then oh, in okay. Chicago. Right, the magic um, of so, <laughs> movie making and stuff. I was not a globe trotter until uh, I went for the final episode oh, okay. and I shot it. But I only was in Europe, uh, which was fantastic. I was in Berlin, and I was in Paris, and uh, Naples, Napoli, Italy. And uh, the real treat for me was that I was, for the first time, I was staying in the same hotel. 
was flying on the flights with the rest of the cast and the crew, hanging out with everybody. You see, the other times I would shoot in San Francisco and just go home to my house. And so I didn't feel quite as much a part of the group that was a globetrotter flying all over the world. I didn't oh. get to go to the Mexico City and uh, India and all these beautiful places. Oh, okay. Well, but you went to Italy and to Paris and oh, all these places. Oh, my goodness. It was, <laughs> it was just incredible. It was incredible. And a lot of people said, uh, oh, Michael, you know, you were in Paris, you were in Napoli. Did you go see all the best uh, tourist sites? And, well, the answer is yes and no. I saw them because uh, Lana Wachowski and the whole Sense8 crew took us to the best uh, sites there were. We, of course, we shot on the Eiffel Tower. We were everywhere, the best places in all of Europe. But I really, once I was there, I didn't want to leave the set. I didn't want to go away from my friends on Sense8 mm -hmm. because the, the party, the best party in all of Europe was on the set of Sense8. So why, why would I go anywhere else? Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Um, fourth, fourth question. Uh, what is on the cluster's secret before most of the other supporting characters? Why do you think he jumps in with both feet when it comes to these dangerous missions? Because he's in love. He's in love with, with all of his friends. And Hi, Vargas, he, a a lovely character. <laughs> he thinks to himself, um, how could I live with myself uh, for the rest of my life if, if I don't uh, come and help my friend? So I might, I might die, but uh, I'd rather be dead if I didn't. What if my friend died and I knew that maybe I could have helped? Right. I'd rather be dead than knowing that I try at least to help. That's why I think uh, that's why I love Vogue so much. Right. Yeah. You you can actually feel that Vogue actually loves so much her uh, his friends. It's it's so beautiful. I think Sensei, in when it comes to relationships, whether it's romantic or just a friendship, it's just friends so perfect. Or, yeah. Like. I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's. I mean, it's realistic, but I don't feel like I have lived the friendship like that in my life. And I have pretty good friends, so it's. I don't know. It's yeah. So cool. Okay. Well, uh, but I'm sorry. You know, sort of maybe if you have this situation come up, you never know the depths of your own heart. Our mm. we were we were tried. You know. We had these difficulties, and our friends were in great danger. And uh, maybe I'm hoping that this is not the case for you, and you don't <laughs> have to jump in front of. But on the other hand, uh, Sandy and I heard about what you're doing today in Venezuela. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we want, we want you to know that our hearts are with you. Thank you so much. And uh, I think the whole the whole world is is with you today and, uh, and always and uh, we've been following from afar for a long time and uh, oh. we, we sure will do you the best and uh, if you really need us we'll fly down and, and we'll, we'll kick some ass for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, we will need that if this president doesn't resign but we'll, call we'll keep fighting. We'll call Sonny. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Some karate kicks. Yes, we need that right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how is everything? How is how are you and uh, how is Venezuela? Is it? Where are you? I love. Are you in Caracas? No, no, I'm in Valencia. It's like a three-hour oh. ride from Caracas. Yeah, and there's. And what time is it for you? Uh, it's 11 p.m. Oh, sorry. So, four hours. Yeah, difference. I'm four hours. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, people have been um, 
protesting a lot. I, I went to protest during the morning until the afternoon, but the protest like continued, and I, I heard a few like. I'm sorry, language barrier. How do I say this? Not bombs, but like like shootings. Ah, the tear it, gas. Yeah, 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 yeah and rubber like rubber, bullet. rubber bullets. Well, they used to use rubber bullets a long time ago. Now, now they, they use real bullets. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I live in a in a my my house is pretty safe, but I live in a place where I came here. Um, all the Protestants yeah. and stuff. So I've been hearing a lot of boom, 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 and it's a little oh, wow. crazy, but yes. kind of used to it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, we really wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. My friends here in Venezuela are really going to appreciate that. They were so excited, by the way. This is not the point of the call, oh. sorry. <laughs> yeah, one of them was like, can I be with you? And I was like, nope, you can't. <laughs> You'll see it later. <laughs> um, uh, next is, uh, I'm already done with Michael's question. Um, next is Sandra. How did you land the role of Janet? Well, uh, auditioning. Had a few auditions mm -hmm. and uh, uh, callbacks and made interviews with the cast and director. Tell her about Chicago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I felt really good about it. I felt like I knew who she was and felt solid and they were very positive and now we're gonna you're gonna come to the table read in San Francisco and about three days beforehand they said well my agent called and said well they've decided to cast your role in Chicago because they changed the schedule and I was bummed <laughs> I was like so they were telling me I didn't get the role and I kept thinking that just doesn't feel right and three weeks went by, and I'm still like, well, this doesn't feel right, so I'm not doing that. And, and then they called me and said, hey, they want to know if you're flying to Chicago to shoot, you know, your scene. So that was... They needed Sandy. There are no actors. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so glad well, that you please. got to play Janet, because, I mean, I'm, right. I'm looking at you... At, and I'm really glad that you got to play Janet because I'm looking at you and Janet is a pretty scary character, I'm not going to lie. And you're just not like her <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, I feel so comfortable talking to you. I'm glad. Likewise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very different than myself. Yeah. Um, the second question is, what's it like to play one of the most intense, yes, characters in the show? You know, I, as an actor, I, I loved it. Uh, uh, I enjoyed because because I got to, you know, go, go deep and completely be someone else. And, and uh, so any character I'm going to enjoy playing, I think. And in between scene, when I first did it in Chicago with Nomi, you know, she's weeping and I'm a bitch. I'm a evil mother. <laughs> Misguided, <laughs> and uh, in between the scenes, I would grab her hand and say, "I'm so sorry." Oh. <laughs> Pretty much. 
watch it. Bless you. See, that's the same. Yeah, it's very, very different. I'm sorry. I have bad connection. It says I, I have bad connection. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. That's quite all right. Oh, again, bad connection. Back to normal. Um, fourth question. Oh, cool. what, do, what do you think Nomi's and Janet's relationship would be like in season three if it ever happens? Oh, that's such a lovely, of course, good question. Good question. And I have about that. Of course, I have this dream of, of, of just very funny. I love how they uh, use the pop brownie to bring Janet, you know, what I would like to say about her true nature of love. And, and, and I, I think that she might become, oh, I could, I could sense that she might become overly. Uh, in their lives, and you know, maybe bringing bring her own, you know, pop brownies and things. And I could see her lip, and I could also see that it would be too much to us because I'm sure there would be so much history of that. But I could see Janet working on trying to be closer, trying to be a better mom than she was because she cared yeah. about. About Nami, that's that's why she did all. I mean, it, it it wasn't the best things to do, but she was just trying to help her in her own in, close-minded yes, way. She was, yeah, she's doing what she thought was the right thing. You know, right. It wasn't. <laughs> and last question for Sandra is: What was it like working with Jamie Clayton on season one? You already mentioned a little bit about this. But... Oh. Yes. Oh, it was lovely. It was really, there was so, so much support, um, you know, coming from both of us. I mean, we would hug after, after we shot. Sorry, I don't know if it was the back connection or maybe I just hit something accidentally. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Anyway, yes, it was lovely, lovely with, with Jamie Clayton and it was it was real and in fact when I went back for the uh, I guess it was the second season and I was nervous uh, thinking about my scene and, and I didn't get my script until, you know, very close to when we were shooting, and I went to get my costuming done, and I saw Jamie, and I just felt my body, every cell kind of settled in when I saw her, and we hugged each other, but she's very supportive, oh. so yeah, all good there, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Now, for the questions for both of you. Uh, what are some of the best or funniest comments you've gotten from the Cincy fans? Oh. Um, well, uh, you know, really, the, the, the same thing keep happening. You know, they're not a ton of fun things. Really, really super touching things. There have been a lot of people who have made comments like, you know, I felt like an outcast, felt like I didn't belong anywhere, you know, some people were um, transgender, some people were LGBTQ some other way, or some people were from a, a, a different country, some people were just a little weird like myself, and, and they said, since eight made me feel like I belonged, like there were people here, like, like home. me, yeah, and, totally. and and like home, and like, 
next there's hope for for people like us, you know. That was definitely always touched my heart. And um you know, people said that uh the other cast members said that Brazil was just crazy with fans. Uh but this number two would be Italy and number three would be France. And when we were in uh, Napoli, oh my goodness, it was insane that they, uh, they were at our hotel all day, much of the night. And uh, let's see, the story I like to tell is uh, one time we were shooting, uh, the set was on one side of these very, very, very narrow streets in uh, downtown Naples, Napoli. But lunch, was on the other side of the street, and all the fans were in between. For just me, just me, I had three bodyguards <laughs> to put through all the fans, and it was really fun to have a really good time with these bodyguards. My my main casting was Guido. <laughs> I thought it was so Italian. It seemed like a like the right name for an Italian bodyguard, you know. <laughs> and he was really tough looking. He was a very you know, so we would, I would come, uh, I would be like, hey, and I'm like, I'm from half of the thing, and I'm like, I'm so happy to see you, and, and, uh, and we would play the back, guy. he'd be like, oh, uh, Michael, oh, Michael, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go, oh, just one more, just one more, you know, and, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> we gotta go, and that, and that was, uh, that was so much fun, and, you know, just people, would would bring in and, and yell and but you know what I have to say also that they were so respectful and um, there was one time where there were three four five hundred people had been waiting all day really to see much of anything and and so finally they opened the gates because of the scene that we were shooting, uh, this is when we were going to um, uh, uh, rescue uh, 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 Wolfgang in, uh, were we rescuing, <laughs> gosh, I forget it, everything, in um, Leela's, in Leela's castle type place, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope I can make this finish with the right. <laughs> And um, th there was a big more of the crowd when they could see finally. They could see everything, and the, the people from the crew went out to, okay, okay, let watch, but you have to be quiet because we can't shoot through the sense eight if you're loud. And not a uh, peep was heard from a three mile ride. <laughs> They were just paying attention, being really quiet, and they're like, yay, they're there. Were, well, they loved Sensei. They, they wanted the show to have a good shoot. You know, that was what they understood. They still understand the film industry, you know, that if there's the wrong noise, that it's going to work, and they wanted the show to work. So And every day, you know, I, I mean, uh, on a house, you know, just can't stop. What a beautiful uh, person. Uh, we all know how talented she is, but not everybody knows how kind. And uh, she's saying, poor connection will ignore that. Every day after lunch, usually, Mom will say to us, say, gratitude, gratitude, a thankfulness, thankfulness. We would go out and we would sit and um, we needed rest, but all these people would come out to see us. So we would just jump right into the crowd and it never failed to give energy to us. And uh, it was a lot of fun and it was beautiful. One of the best of my life, absolutely. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it. It sounds in the, in the, in the, Finale, uh, uh, they showed like a behind the scenes or something, and it feels like the, the 
cast and the crew, there was so much love there. Like it wasn't just job oh, yeah. or just going to work. It was like like home, even for for you guys. Or that's how yes. like what I could see, what I could feel yeah. just by looking at those videos. You are absolutely right, and I have to be the crew uh, because a lot of the actors you know, were sort of or to some degree by Lana and Lily and Sense8 you know at least to an international audience you know this is not um, uh, Brad Pitt and, and Jula, Julina Jolie These were some local people uh, Max was uh, known in Germany uh, and uh, the other stars were known in their country they're not huge international stars, but the crew, they were, and a lot of them took a lot less money because they wanted to finish. They wanted to finish the final episode of Sense8. Um, I, I want to say, you asked about fan reactions, and um, Tammy and I will be walking around in San Francisco, and uh, a lot of the times we'll say, oh! And I'll say, do you recognize no, there's another person from Sensei here? Do you know? You know, and, and they're looking around, and they and they never recognize her because she's so Janet is so mean, and Sandy's so nice. Right. They, 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 they don't recognize her. But like very generally, we always felt you know, there because you know it was, it was um, I had a much larger screen time and. Everybody's 
said Lon would write scenes that would re re reflect exactly what I was feeling. And what I, it, it to me, it was actually a fan in, in Popter who talked, he said, oh, well, Bug says and does what the fans are feeling and thinking. And I was like, oh, that's, that's really true. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I heard about the, the ability of a sensei to put off when it's tell what I asked the fan, you know, I'm like, oh. Then, what, I lost I you there. Is, I, Can you repeat that? Uh, Sorry. Yes. Um, you guys repeat. Uh, um, a fan of Tommy Hair, a friend of mine, said that Bug said all the spiritual with this meat box. Said back that connection. I thought it was gonna hang off the call. We should be finishing by now, but I have another question. Well, three more. Can I ask them? Yes. Go. Please do it. Yes. But I, I'm dominating too much. No, no, no. no. I <laughs> we should talk about the Michael Tower at some point. Wow. Go on. It's your question. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I, I, oh, got no, a bad I, connection again, and then I lost you for a second. I'm so sorry about the bad connection. We know. It was working okay it's, 15 it's minutes ago. It's not you. No, it's the country. <laughs> um, this is my final question, and it's why I already asked this to three girls that are like very um, fighting really hard for season three to happen. And it's why do you think the show a show like Sensei deserves to continue? There's what Do, des, deserves to continue. Uh, why does it deserve to continue? Yes. Is that the question? Yes. Uh, I have the oh. my response. Because it's it's the most important show for the community to people who don't feel like they belong in the world. Who are and not included. Yeah. What I believe, who are not included, and they're not included in Hollywood film, they're not included in the blockbuster television shows in Netflix. And it took me a long time to realize that it's not just um, the LGBT community, it's also international people. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that people from all over the world watch uh, American, um, so much American entertainment. And so when, when Sense8 flies to different countries in the world, they are including entire peoples from all over the world and uh, who are not being included in any other show and, and uh, made to feel like yes, we see you, you matter, you're very important. And uh, that to me is uh, is an important thing. And I don't think that he, and yeah, I'm sorry, but on, I feel uh -huh. strongly too. I agree with absolutely what Mark is saying. Uh, first and foremost, maybe. But even beyond that, I feel because I know many people who are passionate about the show who are kind of mainstream. Yes. And what I think. What I feel very strongly about is my one of my strong themes in my 
life and work is that we are all connected. That, and so whether you're transgender or whatever, look at it so it's not an oddity, it's just being human. Yes. And um, I think Sensei really showed that, that, that it's, a, it's a human, uh, the human struggle and the human beauty, uh, how we're connected to feel each other and how important it is to, to use, that we need everybody in order to do anything, really. We can't we do it on our own. We need everybody. Well said. Feel pretty passionate about that. <laughs> well, even Janet <laughs> learned that. Even even the the character That's learned right. that. <laughs> That's right. The great joy of a little remedy was. <laughs> yeah, about what you said, Michael, uh, about the 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 show having so many people from around the world. I was, I mean, I was a little surprised at the. The man who plays Hernando, I don't really know his not his real name. I think it's Alfonso. I, I mean, I know the name. I just forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, Juancho. He, we call him Juancho. Juancho. Yes, Alfonso. Yeah, he like was Hernando. in a in a in a Mexican show. Obviously, Mexican show. Like a, it, it was like a soap opera for teenagers, yes. I guess. I understand. He's a big star down. Yeah. Mexico. And I yeah. understand. And I didn't really like the show to be honest, but I watched it a couple of times and I knew who he was and then I saw him there and I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> it was it was <laughs> so cool to see him there. Um, the next two questions are not mine, they're from fans on Twitter. And the first one is Peter Aarons. He asks, um, what do you feel when you see the Sensei fandom's persistent efforts to promote the show in order to get a season three sometime in the future? Me? Um, well, both of us. Uh, I, I, I am so impressed and, and moved and it's, it's, a, I, it's wonderful because it's, it's, it feels very real, very sincere. And I, and I, I don't, I don't have a television and I don't really watch things, but, uh, so I don't know, uh, if this happens with other shows or not. I'm quite impressed with the passion in the, uh, of the fans. I don't think they're ever going to stop, stop fighting for it. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, I'm including myself there because I really want a season three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm great. And yeah. thankful and uh, bowled over and impressed. And I just, I, I love it. You know, um, we'll see what happens. I mean, my, I, a lot of people that I've talked to with the show have said, well, we, 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 we doubt it, you know, but that's what we did the first time, you know, and we got the final episode. So uh, it wouldn't have happened. That final episode would not have happened without That's it. The outpour just blew everybody's minds. Yeah. Okay. And uh, why not? Why not? Maybe that could happen again. I'd be all for it. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope that when it happens, Venezuela is in a better place, so they can have another cluster and maybe a Venezuelan member. Why not? <laughs> I would love that. Maybe Bug is Venezuela, really. We don't know. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, the <laughs> last question is from Danny, and she asks, uh, do you have new projects in mind? Greetings from Argentina. Well, um, we, we both are doing a lot of creating of our own material and uh, we help each other a little bit. Um, I have writing uh, have two plays that are a one man plays, just one actor, myself, that I perform and Sandy has been helping me write the 
it, it might be a third, fourth, and fifth play. It might be a novel. It might be an it's an I am writing. Awesome. I'm sorry, I lost you there. Can you read that uh, little part? Sure, sure. I was talking about I'm I'm writing the next project. Yeah. Might be several plays, and it might be a novel, an audio book. Not have to see how it turns out, but the subject is that I live in the very uh, poor neighborhood, and we're seeing right now a Francisco, um, how the rich have become so rich that I am surrounded by thousands of poor people who were kicked out of their homes and they live in tents in the richest place in maybe the entire world. And uh, anyway, this is where I live, and it's uh, fascinating to me. And I think it. Uh, I, I I hope. I hope I do the subject justice. <laughs> oh, he is. It's quite good. I'm sure quite you good. will. Um, I want to plug my yeah my own but I and I and I write as well and, and people reading some piece I wrote. But my one of my passions is that continuing to work on is to get hospice in prisons. Do you know what hospice is? No, it's I, when it's the care. What is hospice? It's it, care it's, for the dying, people who are dying. Oh, dying. oh, I, I met, I met someone. Who, yeah. I met, yeah, so I met they, someone so who in did our that. Prisons are, are, yes, so you understand it. Uh, so our prisons here, not <laughs> but I've been working on getting that kind of care into the prison, training uh, prisoners to take care of each other. So that that's a, 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 a long-term passion of mine. So that's all. And she is so close right now to getting this done. And uh, the United States has more prisoners per capita than any country in the world. I think it's just tied with Russia. I think, I think something like that. But yeah, it's not good. But the, the prisoners that we are working with are beautiful people. I mean. You don't meet finer people. They're so real and care so much for each other. So they've been dying bad in prison. So who can live with that anyway? That's so cool. I hope that you get to keep working with nice prisoners and not mean ones. Because <laughs> I, I, I know there been. are. So. Yeah. <laughs> So much. Um, I, I want to say one more time that again we are watching very carefully for Venezuela to. Thank you so much. You have yeah, no idea how much that means to me, really. <laughs> we love you in Venezuela. Yeah, we love you, and, and bravo to you, your, your wonderful, uh, shining spirit through all of what's going on there. Thank you, and thank you so much again for agreeing to do this, and I'm sorry for all of the difficulties that we had with the Skype oh, and, oh, and the internet my pleasure. connection. My pleasure. Oh, yeah. It's my pleasure too. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you, you so too. much. You too. Thank you. All right. Hope you guys have a Good wonderful night. evening. You too. Bye. Bye.